today we are going to discuss penicillin biosynthesis by the fungus penicillium chrysogenum okay so now this topic is very important for all the national level competitive exams because many questions have been asked and will be asked on this topic in several exams like gate jam csi and net dbt grf bet so whichever biotechnology entrance exams you are going to prepare you will get at least some questions on penicillin so important is this topic so let's start this penicillin was first discovered by the scientist fleming and it was isolated by flore and chain from the fungus penicillium nodatum so this is the strain of the fungus from which the penicillin was first isolated okay so now it is seen that penicillin are mostly produced by some fungi like penicillium and aspergillus so these two are the major types of fungi which produce penicillin nowadays natural penicillins are effective against gram positive bacteria now this is very important natural penicillins are those penicillins which are obtained only from fungi that is they are not synthesized artificially in the laboratory so only natural penicillins are effective against gram positive bacteria but now the penicillins the artificially synthesized penicillins have they have seen that uh, those penicillins are also effective against gram positive bacteria and some are also effective against certain types of gram negative bacteria also okay but natural penicillins are entirely effective against gram positive bacteria only so this point is very important now penicillins are members of beta lactam antibiotic family so there is actually a beta lactam antibiotic family among the groups of antibiotics so penicillin is the most predominant member of this family okay so other other members are like cephalosporin so cephalosporin is also a member of uh, the one of the predominant member of this beta lactam antibiotic family and there are other uh, examples of beta lactam antibiotic okay we will see why they are called beta lactam antibiotics because they have a condensed beta lactam ring in the structure we will see next there are other examples of beta lactam antibiotics like we have nocardines like we, we have monobactams okay so these are other sorts of examples we will do a separate video on them uh, some day but penicillins are the most predominant members of this beta lactam antibiotic family and next after penicillin the most predominant member comes cephalosporin why they are called beta lactam antibiotics because they have a condensed beta lactam in, in their structure and these antibiotics beta lactam antibiotics mostly inhibit bacterial cell wall that is they inhibit mostly peptidoglycan synthesis so how do they inhibit let us see so what happens penicillins or beta lactam antibiotics if we say beta lactam antibiotics they bind to some penicillin binding proteins penicillins or any beta lactam antibiotics bind to some penicillin binding proteins present in the cell wall of some bacteria now these penicillin binding proteins are present and they help in the these proteins help in the peptidoglycan synthesis which is necessary for the synthesis of bacterial cell wall so once these penicillins or beta lactam antibiotics bind to the penicillin binding proteins what happens after binding they inhibit this beta penicillin binding proteins and as a result the bacterial cell dies as a result what happens the bacterial cell dies so on binding of this uh, beta lactam antibiotics to the penicillin binding protein the bacterial cell dies so in this way they can bring about the death of the bacterial cells now let us see the chemical structure how the uh, the penicillins look like so penicillin as i have already said 
they can they are members of beta lactam antibiotics so they must be containing a beta lactam ring in their structure okay so on the right hand side you can see this is the beta lactam ring that they are containing this is the beta lactam ring from here to here okay this is the beta lactam ring that we have in the structure this is the beta lactam ring and we have another ring on the right hand side this ring is called as the thiazolidin ring this ring that we have is the thiazolidin ring so beta lactam ring and thiazolidin ring these two together rings and with some other groups these together okay make up the 6 amino penicillinic acid so 6 amino penicillinic acid is nothing but the combination of the two rings beta lactam ring and thiazolidin ring so because of the presence of beta lactam rings in this classes of antibiotics these antibiotics are so called beta lactam antibiotics right so beta lactam antibiotic beta lactam ring plus thiazolidin ring these two rings together make up 6 amino penicillinic acid apart from this you can see at the sixth position you have a variable acyl group okay with a variable r group so this is the r group which can vary and you have at the sixth position a variable acyl group so depending on this acyl group you can variable acyl group you can have various types of penicillins so the basic structure consists of six amino penicillinic acid which i have already told you six amino penicillinic acid is actually a combination of the beta lactam ring uh, and Uh, and the thiazolidin ring so it is actually a combination of two rings beta lactam ring and thiazolidin ring six amino penicillinic acid abbreviated as 6 apa consists of a thiazolidin ring with a condensed beta lactam ring i have already shown that and a variable acyl group at position 6 so depending upon this uh, acyl group we have various types of penicillin if fermentation is carried out without addition of any side chain precursor that is if you do not add any side chain precursor means if you do not have, uh, do not add any particular uh, acyl group at this position okay so suppose you do not add any particular acyl group at this position then what will happen automatically natural penicillins will be produced and uh, out of this natural penicillins penicillin g penicillin v and some amount of penicillin o are mostly used for commercial processes so without addition of side chain precursor so if you do not add any if you do not supplement the media with any particular side chain precursor what will happen uh, natural penicillins will automatically be produced and out of those natural penicillins the commercially utilized natural penicillins are penicillin g penicillin v and penicillin o so this chemical structure this slide is very important because more many questions have been asked on the structure of penicillin so one remember one thing if you do not add any particular uh, the if you add a side chain precursor so you will get natural penicillin but if you can add any particular side chain precursor you will get some derivatives of penicillin so let us see first the classification of penicillin how penicillins are classified so penicillins are classified mostly into four types but the major classification we have narrow spectrum penicillin okay on the basis of function we have two types of classification one is narrow spectrum and the other is the broad spectrum narrow spectrum and broad spectrum so what does uh, narrow spectrum mean narrow spectrum means is nothing narrow spectrum is they are effective only uh, against a particular some particular types of bacteria and will be ineffective against other types of bacteria so narrow spectrum means they are effective only against particular types of bacteria and broad spectrum means they are effective against uh, many types of bacteria not only against one particular strain of bacteria but they will be effective against many strains of bacteria so this is the main difference between broad spectrum and narrow spectrum so they are mainly this is mainly classification on the basis of function okay 
Now, uh, as I have already told you, natural penicillins are mostly uh, of two types, penicillin G and penicillin V. Okay, it has also been seen that some penicillins are effective against staphylococcal bacteria, so they are called as anti-staphylococcal penicillin. And out of this, most three important ones are methicillin, oxacillin, and nafcillin. We have extended spectrum penicillins also, like ampicillin, amoxicillin, and carbenicillin. So I think uh, if you look closely, many uh, antibiotics that we use against some strains of bacteria, you will find the compositions written on all over the tablets. Okay, on the you will find written either amoxicillin or carbenicillin. You will, uh, if you notice, you will find that. And we have another classification. We have beta lactamase inhibitor. Beta lactamase is what? Beta lactamase is actually an enzyme, which it is actually an enzyme present in bacterial cells. It is actually a, uh, an enzyme present in bacterial cells. It is for their defensive purposes. Okay, so this enzyme inactivates penicillin. This enzyme does what? This enzyme inactivates penicillin. And how does this enzyme inactivate penicillin? This enzyme actually splits the beta lactam ring present in penicillin. That is why these enzymes are called as beta lactamases. So this enzyme does what? This enzyme actually inactivates penicillin by splitting the beta lactam ring. By splitting the beta lactam ring. So in this way, this is actually present in bacteria. Many bacteria have this beta lactamase inhibitor nowadays because this is actually present for their defensive purposes. Suppose you add penicillin to kill the bacteria and if the bacteria has beta, -lactam, beta lactamase uh, within its cell, okay, what will this enzyme do? This enzyme will inhibit the penicillin or inactivate the penicillin by splitting of the beta lactam ring and then the penicillin will be ineffective and we call such bacteria as penicillin resistant bacteria. Alright, so by splitting the beta lactam ring and what do we call such bacteria uh, who have beta lactam ring in their body, in their cell wall, we call them penicillin resistant bacteria PRB. So, penicillin resistant bacteria. Alright. So, beta lactamase inhibitors. So, what do these beta lactamase inhibitors do? These enzymes, these inhibitors first bind and inhibit the beta lactamase so that the beta lactamase will not be able to inhibit the penicillin. And then you add penicillin and that will kill the bacterial cell wall. So, what will happen? You first add beta lactamase inhibitors like clavulanic acid, sub salbactam. Tazobactam, so these uh, uh, the beta lactamase inhibitors will go and bind to beta lactamases, making them ineffective. And now you add penicillins. As a result, you have you don't have any beta lactamases that will inhibit penicillin, and now penicillin can go and inhibit the bacterial cell wall synthesis. Now let's look at the structure and names of some natural penicillins. Like in this figure, you can see. The major natural penicillin that is the most famous is the benzyl penicillin or it is also called as a penicillin G. Why? Because the R group here is a derivative or the this group, phenyl acetic acid group. Okay, so if you add phenyl acetic acid, then at the R position you will get benzyl penicillin. But Benzyl penicillin is also the natural penicillin. So, if you do not add any particular uh, uh, site chain precursor also, you will get the uh, benzyl penicillin. Similarly, if you add this site chain, okay, if you add this site chain precursor, what, you, what will you get? You will get penicillin F. If you add this site chain precursor, you will get penicillin dihydro F. Likewise, if you add this site chain precursor, you will get penicillin K. If you add this site chain precursor, you will get Penicillin X. Yeah. Likewise, if you add this side chain precursor, CH3CO, if you add this group, you will get methyl penicillins. So, all these are natural penicillins. Why natural penicillins? Because they are produced naturally within the, say, uh, within the body of the fungi. Okay. 
So these are all natural penicillins. And if you add a particular side chain precursor, suppose I want to synthesize the natural penicillin, methyl penicillin. So what will I do? In the media, I will add the side chain precursor, CHTCO. And if I add them, I will get methyl penicillin. Suppose I want to uh, get penicillin F, then I will add this particular side chain precursor. So I will get penicillin F. Okay. And for getting penicillin G, you don't need to add any side chain precursor because if you don't add any side chain precursor, automatically you will get penicillin G because it is the most common natural penicillin. Okay. And the, in case of penicillin G, the side chain precursor is phenyl acetic acid, this group. There are some biosynthetic penicillins we will see. Like we have already talked about penicillin G, penicillin V and penicillin O. So these three biosynthetic penicillins are mostly used for commercial purposes. They are produced, they are biosynthetic penicillins are actually a type of natural penicillins produced by biological cells. And these three penicillins are mostly uh, used for commercial purposes. Like I have already told you if, you, if you add phenyl acetic acid, in case of penicillin G, the side chain precursor is phenyl acetic acid. Uh, so if you want to synthesize say, penicillin V, you will add phenoxyacetic acid as the side chain precursor. If you want to add, uh, if you want to get penicillin O, then you will add allyl marcapto acetic acid as the side chain precursor. So you can design which penicillin you want to get on the basis of which side chain precursor you are adding. Okay. So if you want to get penicillin V, you will add phenoxyacetic acid. If you want to get penicillin O, you will add allyl marcapto acetic acid. And in case of penicillin G, as I have already told you, it does not need the extra addition of phenyl acetic acid as a side chain precursor because if you don't add any side chain precursor, you will automatically get penicillin G because it is the most common natural biosynthetic penicillin. Now, there are some semi-synthetic penicillins. Now, what is the difference between biosynthetic uh, and semi-synthetic penicillins? The biosynthetic penicillins are fully produced within the body of the fungus, uh, within the cells of the fungus, penicillium chrysogenum. Now, semi-synthetic penicillin, as from the name, semi-synthetic means half of it is synthesized by the fungus. Okay, half of it is synthesized biologically and other half is made artificial. So, that is why it is called as semi-synthetic. So, they are actually derivatives of natural penicillins or they are actually derivatives of the 6-amino penicillinic acid, whichever way you want to call them. Derivatives of natural penicillins or derivatives of 6-amino penicillinic acid. Alright. With slightly different but advantageous characteristics. They have slightly different but advantageous characteristics. So, what are the characteristics? Uh, you we will see next. To produce hemisynthetic penicillin, how will we do that? Penicillin G, which is the most common naturally occurring biosynthetic penicillin, is enzymatically or chemically. So, you can do this by either of the two ways. Either you can uh, use the chemical method or you can use the biological method. Right. So, either of the two processes, by either of the two processes, penicillin G is split to form 6 APA, 6 amino penicillinic acid, which is then chemically recycled to make yet another penicillin, another strain of penicillin. So, what happens in the penicillin G? Penicillin G is actually made of what? Phenyl acetic acid. Suppose this is the phenyl acetic acid. Alright, this is the phenyl acetic acid and here along with that you have 6-APA because 6-APA is the most fundamental component in the structure of all penicillins. So what you are going to do, you will to prepare semi-synthetic penicillin, you first will split this bond, you first will split this bond between phenyl acetic acid and 6-APA and then you isolate and then you recycle it back the 6 APA because now the 6 APA has a 
free position at the position 6 okay so this 6 api has a free r group uh, the, the, at the position 6 where you can add the side chain precursor suppose you want to synthesize the penicillin ampicillin suppose you want to synthesize the penicillin semi synthetic penicillin ampicillin so in this figure you can see ampicillin for ampicillin you need, you need to add the side chain precursor this one so what you will do in case of penicillin g you will first break this bond between phenylacetic acid and 6 api because penicillin g has phenylacetic acid as r group so you will first split this bond between phenylacetic, uh, phenylacetic r group phenylacetic acid and the 6 apa and then you will isolate the 6 apa and recycle it back and after recycling you will add this side chain precursor in case of ampicillin and then you will get uh, the, the you will add the side chain precursor for ampicillin and then you will get semi synthetic penicillin so this is the step all right so first what you have to do you have to break this bond between the penicillin G in present in penicillin G between phenylacetic acid and 6 APA. Then you will isolate the 6 APA and now 6 APA has a free position at the uh, free R group at the 6 position where you can add your suitable side chain precursor. In case of ampicillin, if you look at in this diagram, the side chain precursor is this one. So you will add this side chain precursor automatically. What you will get? You will get the ampicillin okay so in a way what you have done you have prepared the semi-synthetic penicillin from a natural penicillin right so in this way you can prepare semi-synthetic penicillins from natural penicillins by splitting of the uh, bond between phenyl acetic acid and 6 ap so the most general step of preparing semi-synthetic penicillin is from uh, breaking the bond in penicillin G. So this is the most common naturally occurring uh, the biosynthetic penicillin that is used for the synthesis of semi-synthetic penicillin. Now, why semi-synthetic penicillins are preferred? Because they have improved acid stability and they have resistance to beta lactamases. So, in unlike natural biosynthetic penicillins which have less resistance to beta lactamases, Okay, these semi-synthetic penicillins have more resistance to beta lactamases and they have expanded antimicrobial activity. That is, some of them have even, uh, some of them are even uh, broad spectrum penicillins. Okay, so some of them even have broad spectrum action. So, because of these three main reasons, semi-synthetic penicillins are mostly preferred and prepared from natural penicillins and the most natural and common penicillin that is used for the synthesis of semi-synthetic penicillin is what? Penicillin G. Now let us look how penicillin G, how penicillin G, okay, is prepared or biosynthesized within the cells of the fungus penicillium chrysogenum. Now this is very important. This slide is very important. How the biosynthesis of penicillin G, we are talking about penicillin G only because it is the most common penicillin. Other penicillins are also synthesized in more or less the same way. So what happens? First, you need to construct the beta lactam thiazolidin ring. So you need to construct these two rings and these two rings are constructed from the two amino acids L-cysteine and L-valine. So these two rings are are actually built up from these two amino acids L-cysteine and we have L-valine. So at first what you will have to do you will add uh, L-cysteine to a dipeptide which is called as L-alpha amino adipic acid. So in the inside the body of the, uh, the fungi penicillium chrysogenum okay so what what happens first L-cysteine adds to the dipeptide l alpha amino adipic acid this is abbreviated as l alpha triple l all right l alpha triple so inside the body of the fungus penicillium chrysogenum l first this dipeptide l alpha amino adipic acid is prepared then l cysteine adds to it to form the tripeptide Delta L alpha amino adipyl cysteine D valine. 
After addition of L-cysteine to this dipeptide, this tripeptide forms. If you look at in this figure, this is what the what looks like the structure of L-alpha amino adipic acid. So first, L-alpha amino adipic acid is produced within the body of the fungi penicillium chrysogenum. Then L-cysteine is added to it. So this is actually what this is a dipeptide. This is actually what? This is actually a dipeptide. And then uh, yeah, L-alpha amino adipic acid uh, is the dipeptide which is synthesized within the body of the fungi, a penicillium chrysogenum. Now L-cysteine gets added to this body of the, uh, to L-cysteine gets added uh, to this dipeptide to form L-alpha amino adipyl cysteine. Now L-valine comes and it also adds to this L-alpha amino adipyl cysteine to form L alpha amino adipyl cystinyl valine. So this is the final tripeptide that is produced. We are talking about that. This is the tripeptide that is produced. And then this undergoes cyclization in two steps to form isopenicillin N. So from here to here, this is the formation of isopenicillin N. Okay, so what happens? First, uh, L-alpha amino adipic acid is produced, this dipeptide is produced within the body of the fungi penicillium chrysogenum, then L-cysteine gets added to it to form the tripeptide delta L-alpha amino adipyl cystinyl devaline this one okay so this tripeptide that undergoes cyclization to form isopenicillin n now what happens you need to form isopen the isopenicillin g or penicillin g from isopenicillin n so here after this step after isopenicillin n formation from isopenicillin n to isopenicillin g formation this whole step takes place within the this whole step takes place within paroxysomes this organelle so this organelle is responsible for the formation of penicillin G uh, from isopenicillin N so now isopenicillin N needs to be transported to this paroxysomes okay to uh, form isopenicillin G so here you have a transport protein which transports isopenicillin N from outside into the paroxysomes. So this transport protein is called as the pen M protein, which is responsible for the isopenicillin N transport, pen M protein. So now pen M protein, transporter protein transports isopenicillin N from outside into the paroxysomes. And then you are adding this side chain precursor, uh, the acetyl uh, CoA, okay. So this is phenyl acetyl CoA actually. Now this phenyl acetyl CoA also needs to be transported within the paroxysomes. So you have another protein which is called as the PAT protein, PAT transporter protein, which is responsible for the transport of this phenyl acetyl CoA within the paroxysome. So once the PAT transporter protein transports phenyl acetyl CoA within the paroxysomes, then what happens in presence of acyl transferase? There is an exchange reaction and you have isopenicillin G formation from isopenicillin N. So isopenicillin N is exchanged with phenyl acetic acid or phenyl acetic acyl CoA to form benzyne penicillin or penicillin G. Now, initially scientists for the first time for penicillin development, scientists use the strain WISQ176 strain. Nowadays, we have many strains for penicillin synthesis. So, one example if I show here, we have P2 strain. And the productivity for penicillin G is around 0 0.72. 
if we use another strain suppose p7 the productivity is increased to 1.8 likewise if we use another strain p11 2.3 so as you can see as we uh, use better and better strains the productivity of penicillin g increases okay so this is increase in productivity as you can see here you have an increase in productivity with use of better strains of penicillium penicillium fungi so uh, p2 strain in p2 strain of the fungi you have very low productivity whereas in p11 strain p15 uh, strain of the fungi you have a greater productivity so as you use better strains of the fungi you get better amount of penicillin g productivity now let us see how penicillins are produced uh, in the industrial processes so mostly penicillin g and penicillin v these two penicillins we are interested in producing industrial processes so these are produced by submerged fermentation process this is very important so that the type of fermentation that is used is submerged fermentation and penicillin production is actually an anaerobic process so the whole process takes place uh, there been without addition of any oxygen or addition of very low amount of oxygen and lyophilized spores are used in this case the types of spores that are used for penicillin production are lyophilized spores and the spore concentration is kept at around 5 into 10 to the power 3 per ml so what you will do you take lyophilized culture first and you inoculate it within the uh, the media we inoculate the uh, lyophilized spores into the media and then you add to a pre fermenter this is also called as a seed tank the function of seed tank is to the seed tank is designed in such a way to keep well defined strains of cells viable at a high density for further upstream processing so this is pre fermenter or sometimes we use a seed tank here the function of this seed tank of pre fermenter is to keep the cells viable at a high density for a long time so that we can use them for further upstream processing and then we transfer it to a general large scale fermenter and then we add the necessary nutrients carbon nutrients nitrogen nutrients after then that penicillin production takes place within this large fermenter and then we filter the penicillin and from the filtered we separate the mycelium and then we transfer it to the cooling tank cooling tank and then we perform further downstream processing so let us see what types of media are used for penicillin production so mostly carbon source in case of carbon source in the media we use constip liquor and as a nitrogen source we can use soya milk or yeast extract and the ph is kept around 6.5 so this is the most necessary condition for penicillin production of penicillin the ph has to be kept at around 6 or through 6.5 and precursors if we need to produce penicillin g we will add penicillin phenyl acetic acid so these four conditions are the are first to be met for the production of penicillin so you need to have a carbon source in the media most preferred carbon source in case of penicillin production is constip liquor then a nitrogen source soya milk or yeast extract then you have ph you have to set the ph between 6 to 6.5 and if you desire to prepare penicillin g you need to add phenyl acetic acid so after addition of the media after preparation of the media you add the lyophilized spores to the media and after that you will notice there is mainly the growth phase of 40 hours with doubling time of 6 hours during which during which maximum cell mass is formed so during the growth phase this, this is the first phase that is uh, observed after addition of the lyophilized spores to this media you have this media this is the media say and uh, this is the media and here you add lyophilized spores of the fungi penicillium chrysogenum you add the lyophilized spores to this media and after some time what you will observe 
you will observe a growth phase which will last for approximately 40 hours and it has a doubling time of 6 hours during which maximum cell mass is produced and then after the growth phase you have a penicillin production phase after the growth phase what you have you have a penicillin production phase during which maximum synthesis of penicillin occurs and growth is sharply reduced in this phase so in case of growth phase you have maximum cell mass synthesis and almost no or very little penicillin synthesis so you have almost no or uh, very little penicillin synthesis in case of growth phase okay so almost no or very little grow uh, the penicillin synthesis in growth phase and in penicillin production phase you have maximum penicillin synthesis and growth uh, is sharply reduced that means you have very little or almost no cell mass growth in case of penicillin production phase all right so and these are the conditions that you need to take care of while preparing penicillin industrial scale now oxygen supply rate is critical because uh, why oxygen supply rate is critical because uh, the uh, because of the production of many much amount of penicillin the viscosity increases viscosity of the media increases so oxygen concentration is very much decreases now you may say that i have told you that penicillin production is actually an anaerobic process so why will you need oxygen oxygen is needed for the metabolic activity of the cells it is not needed for the production of penicillin directly but it is actually needed for the uh, metabolic activity of the cells certain metabolites are need to be produced by the cells of the fungi and for them oxygen you need to have a very low or little amount of oxygen certain metabolites like unsaturated fatty acids need to be produced by the cells of the fungi and for that you need to have a very little amount of oxygen without this metabolism the growth will not occur in that range to produce penicillin in this on the right hand side you can see as time passes on the concentration of lactose that is the carbon source is going down at the same time the concentration of ammonia that is present in soy milk extract sac which is the nitrogen source it is also growing down so this is the carbon source lactose is the carbon source this is the nitrogen source ammonia is the nitrogen source so the with time what happens the growth cell growth increases so the fungi draws more and more carbon source and nitrogen source so the concentration of both lactose and the ammonia goes on decreasing and at a certain period of time as you can see while the concentration of the media components decreases with time the concentration of biomass gradually increases so as the cell growth or the fungal growth increases the concentration of the carbon source and nitrogen source gradually decreases while the cell growth or the biomass growth gradually increases and after a certain amount of time when the cell growth and uh, has increased and uh, the and the media components the media the, the components have been depleted so after a certain amount of time the penicillin production starts and it increases exponentially so penicillin production always only occurs during nutrient depletion stage so only during nutrient depletion stage when a certain percentage of media component has been depleted and biomass has been increased to a certain value it was only during that stage penicillin production starts so nutrient depletion stage so only during nutri nutrient depletion stage when the lactose and the ammonia concentration has went down to a very low value and the biomass concentration is also increased it is uh, during that stage only you will get 
the penicillin more and more penicillin so penicillin synthesis takes place during the nutrient depletion stage so this is the here we have the growth phase this corresponds to the growth phase and this corresponds to the production phase Now the final step, so once the penicillin has been produced, what we, will you do? You will recover that penicillin. So what will happen? You add, so you add the media and you add the uh, spores to the media. This is the media that has been shown constant liquor and yeast extract and you stabilize the pH to around 6. So you add the lyophilized spores to this media and uh, then these spores plus media, so you add them to a batch fermenter along with a starter culture. So after some time, you will get penicillin here. Okay, so now you have to recover the penicillin and you will recover the penicillin with this instrument called as a rotating filter or it is called as a rotary vacuum filter. So on the right hand side, as you can see, this is what the rotary vacuum filter looks like. Rotary vacuum filter. This is the rotary vacuum filter. Because rotary vacuum filter, because uh, it rotates, that is why it, it is called rotary. Vacuum means there is a uh, function of suction here that is why you have the name vacuum in it and filter because it performs filtration so what happens suppose this is the penicillin broth where you have penicillin this is the where you have liquid penicillin that is that has been freshly produced along with that the yellow ones are the you know, fungal biomass this is actually a mixture of fungal biomass and the liquid penicillin. So, suppose this is the feed. This is the feed containing liquid penicillin and the fungal biomass. This is the liquid penicillin along with the fungal biomass that you have here. You place it here and rotate the filtrate over here. So by suction, so this uh, whole uh, the rotating wheel has small pores within the, the all over the wheel. So these are the small pores. Okay, through which uh, the through which suction pump there is a suction pump and it draws the liquid penicillin into the central core. So as you rotate it continuously, so the, by means of suction and by means of all these small pores, the liquid penicillin is drawn in and is stored in the central duct. So gradually the liquid penicillin gets collected in the central duct and the fungal biomass gets collected because they are thicker, gets collected over the wheel circumference as a cake. This is the cake that that is collected over the wheel circumference because they are thicker so they cannot penetrate the small holes and then where you can uh, once you have collect all the liquid penicillin within the central duct so you can remove this filter cake by means of a knife and you can wash it with water so in this way you collect the both the fungal biomass as well as the penicillin so once the fungal biomass is collected you can use it as an animal feed feed or uh, while uh, the filtrate or the liquid penicillin that you collect after filtration you then dissolve it in butyl acetate and then you add the potassium ions to precipitate salts of penicillin so potassium ions are added to prepare penicillium salts and then you wash dry and filter again by this process you get 99.5 percent pure penicillin and by this process the yield is actually around yield is actually around 90 percent now you can use this 
penicillin for the production of other either you can use for the production of uh, you can use enzymatic modification to make new antibiotics or you can use this penicillin for preparation of other semi synthetic penicillins